Sound design. Yeah. So can you complete a crossover alignment with a simple distance measurement? I think the answer is no, and in this video I want to talk about why I think that is and uh, maybe what you can do instead. So recently I published an article called Are You Still Trying to Align Your Subwoofers with an Audio Analyzer? where I go through 13 common ways that I've tried to complete a crossover alignment and 13 ways that I've failed. And again, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do these. Um, if they work for you, definitely use them. And I think you should try them all and let me know what's working for you. I'd love to hear about it. None of them have really worked reliably for me. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. This seems like such a great hack. And honestly, I, I guess it is. It's a good shortcut because 66% of the time, you're gonna be right. So if you wanna roll the dice, 66% of the time you're gonna get some amount of summation and 33% of the time you're gonna get some amount of cancellation. So I don't know, do you wanna roll the dice? Well, let's, let's look at how this might work out. So over here in MapXT, I've set up a couple of different speaker arrays. We've got this pair here and then I've got another pair. So this is, um, I think uh, Leopard and 900 LFC and then I've got another pair I'll show you in a second. So I also have a helpful little tool here. And this tool is basically just going to quickly help me convert distance to time. Okay. So if I were to get out my laser distance measure and I were to see that, okay, the distance from my measurement position is 22 feet and 18.23 to the sub. So let's put that into my little tool here, 22.08 and 18.23. Okay, this is going to do some calculating and then says, hey, converting that to time, you need to delay the sub by 3.41 milliseconds. And I say, great, I can do that. So over here, I'll delay the sub by 3.41 and my second pair down here, 3.41. And now we can compare. So if I hit predict here and we're predicting at 100 hertz, then uh, this isn't great, it isn't terrible, but what I see here is that we've got our summation kind of pointed down this way, and then we've got cancellation here. So I guess you could say that we're splitting the difference. It's okay, it's, it's not perfect, um, but we, roll, we rolled the dice and we got some summation through our audience plane there. So let's look at our second speaker array. This is the Milo and the 650P, and I'll hit predict. And this is a little bit different story, right? So now we've got cancellation through part of the audience and we've got summation through another part of the audience. Um, and yes, it's always gonna be like that, right? We can only get um, perfect summation in one point and then errors are gonna sort of spread out from there. But as you can see with this method, we're not even really getting perfect summation at this microphone position. And then that's because we've kind of rolled the dice in terms of phase alignment. We may be closer with our time alignment by using this method, but our phase alignment might still be off. Now, some of you might be saying, you have the microphone too close. You need to set it back here. You should measure at like uh, three quarters or back of the audience. So let's try that next. So I've got my fourth mic here and I've already done these measurements. So Let's redo our calculation. 48.87 and 47.74. Okay, so I need to delay the sub by one millisecond because I'm only off by about one foot here. So I can do that. I'll put in one millisecond for this pair and one millisecond for this pair. And let's look at this Milo 650P pair first. Cool, so just different result here, right? So now we have cancellation through half of the audience and we've got some summation up here and like a tiny bit of summation back here. Not ideal. And let's take a look at our other pair, the Leopard and the um, 900 LFC. Now we've got summation through a large portion of the audience and then cancellation up here at the top. So as you can see, if we only use distance offset and we don't really know the relative phase relationship before we start, then we're really rolling the dice 
and we have a 33% chance of getting cancellation and a 66% chance of getting summation. So that's why I think this method of using a simple distance offset without knowing the relative offset ahead of time can be risky and doesn't work reliably. And um, in the next video, I'm going to show you one more way that I think doesn't work and is common. And then I'll be getting to the more reliable method that I think you should start using instead. So let me know if you've tried this, if you've had success with this. People have told me um, stories about it already, and I'd like to hear yours. All right. Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.